going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is the DreamHack Denver Quake Championship Sacrifice Qualifier, where we did just see Stacked move on, and they have indeed qualified for DreamHack Denver for Sacrifice. But we're now going into our loser's bracket action. So one team will make it through in this part of the bracket, and only one team, I might add. So the pressure is on, and this is every team's last chance to make it through from an EU side. Indeed, but sort of just briefly reflecting upon the winner's match we just saw before, Stacked, they weren't unchallenged, but it was four straight rounds. So, and just for those of you that might be wondering who are stacked, it's not too fast, minus Sturmy, plus too good. So one roster swap there with one player being replaced for another one, which has obviously meant the, the name not too fast doesn't really work if Sturmy's not there. So now we renamed to stacked, and we'll be seeing them again win a side in DreamHack in Denver. But moving on to this next match, it's going to be Maestro Gaming versus Dreams and Magic. Now, even Maestro themselves have had a couple of roster changes for this tournament. They have indeed. So Vu is currently unavailable, and therefore he now uh, is not playing under the team at the moment, but Razy has taken his place uh, for DreamHack Denver. But also Hypno does not play with Maestro. At the moment. It's now going to be FaZe who plays instead. So actually, in many ways, it's a completely new roster because there's two less players and two brand new. Razy is a phenomenal player anyway, and he's been doing more than well in Duel. And we haven't seen as much from him in Sacrifice, though. So seeing he's been doing really well in Sacrifice so far, as everyone kind of expected, he's kind of like the dedicated Sawlag player because, I mean, you know, it's it's going to be Razy on Sawlag. You know, can you expect any different? But instead of Vu having his world-famous Anarchy, FaZe is stepping up to the plate, and now he is that dedicated Anarchy instead. He has also been doing really well. And it kind of seems like Garpy is almost like the flexible champion pick. You know, he's that player on Maestro that kind of plays the variable depending on the map. Even today, he's used Galena, Ranger, and Clutch, depending on the map they've been on. But this map's going to be Burial Chamber. But let's talk about Dreams of Magic a little bit as well. So Dream, uh, Dreams of Magic, we saw them uh, attempt the Quake World Championships where they didn't do terribly. Um, they did manage to win some games here and there. They definitely have practiced a lot of sacrifice, but they haven't really had that breakout major success yet. Now, this could be the time they change that. They are in lower bracket already, unfortunately, but this is why they're against Maestro, who had a really close match against Wait For Us, which would have meant they would have played stacked, but they lost at the last minute to Wait For Us. So you know Maestro aren't going to be happy with that loss. They're going to be looking to push through as far as they can, and Dreams of Magic should be much more of the same. But the first map itself is going to be Burial Chamber. So looking forward to seeing what happens here. We've already seen Burial Chamber once. It was the second map in Wait For Us versus Stacked. But will it go down the same way, do you think? Now we know that Garpy is going to be bringing in that uh, Ranger pick that we haven't really seen yet today. Well, I feel like both of these teams really want to... I guess, like, redeem themselves in one way. You know, Dream is Magic. They're really going to be gunning for that LAN performance opportunity because they didn't quite make it during the Quake World Championship. And fun fact, Dream is Magic, one of the oldest Quake clans going. Like, really, really old-school Quake clan, back in, like, Quake 1, I believe. And it's predominantly Spanish players, too. Um, and we did see, you know, players like Slip and Sombra in the duel as well and also were just not quite able to make it into the LAN setting. But Maestro, they did lose narrowly to wait for us. And they're going to want to have their run back as well. But here we go. It's going to be map number one, Burial Chamber. And one once more, those champion compositions are very traditional. The only thing that may not be traditional is the Ranger pick from Garp. So these first 40 seconds are going to be crucial because within that 40 seconds, you'll have the first soul at 20 and the first power up at that 40, 45 seconds ish. So you know you really want to get as much as possible. Putting that acid on the floor, just trying to put that area denial down. But it's safer for Soul Act to try and go in because it doesn't get affected by the acid. So I'm just going to fall down here to the acid damage over time. But Nate is going to go down up anyway. But no, Hell is going to finish him up. And Derrison looks like one by one, Dreams of Magic are getting the soul, but FaZe is just taking them out. One at oh, a time. Oh, barely. You heard that Gordler getting revved, right? You heard it being millis just millimeters away. That connected. was uh, incredibly close. But Maestro, they, they, they really are like a, a, a unit of a team. And I know that they've, that they've had those recent roster, roster swaps, but hell, by the way, getting that impressive triple with that heavy machine gun quad is an incredibly dangerous weapon to have the quad damage on. 40 damage a shot. The rate of fire it has access to is be shaking a stick at, that's for sure. But I was about to say that they're a very composed team. And Sacrifice is a mode that the team takes very, very seriously. And as each land goes on, they do start to progress progressively play a lot better as the weeks pile up. But with their new roster, you're going to see how well will they perform today with the difference in their players. I actually quite like the way Hell's been playing, though. I mean, just generally, his journey in Quake Champions has been very... It's been so dramatic, right? Like, he made the top 16 every week in Duel, but was never quite able to make the top 8 to qualify for regionals. His team got so far in regionals, almost, almost didn't make Worlds, but they were able to do it anyway themselves and make the Quake World Championships, where they had a rough start, but um, a, like, a nice journey through beyond there. And Hell has always been, like, right there playing at the top oh, level nice. of play, but he just never really achieved that top success. But this could be where he changes that and can make Dream Hack. 
Dreams Magic have had a little bit of a hard time getting things on deck so far. 50% has already climbed up. And it's been quite a fast round too, almost 60% in around two minutes. That's not a lot of work Miser have to do with the rest of this round. And wow, good trade. That was actually a really nice sequence from Razy, getting two frags there. You will do so much stunning gun damage, and just quickly just just flick over and swap to that rail. That nice little hit. Even though he died for it, was it would take two for one. So a good trade. And Maestro, look at how much percentage they're already building up. This is crazy. This could very well be the fastest round that we've seen on the broadcast today. Just imagine they've got thirty percent to make something happen. Even their lineup is, is very similar to what we did see in QWT. You know, they've got the knights, they've got the sombra, they've got the slip. Not Still quite able to get anything frag. going. Held is just defending as best he can. That's a rail. You know, he's got a bit of time, but Slip's not going to miss the follow-up. You're surrounded by enemies, and Garpy's going to clean him up there. And still, Maestro, 85% almost now. Just a few seconds away. Protection is going to be up any second now. If they well. get protection, it's game over. I mean, if they get protection, it's going to be game. Unfortunately, Nyx, she did was able to actually use the Telefrag to get protection, but not a lot of health left. So might not be able to do much with it. I think so. Even though Dreams and Magic were able to get the power up, every like literally all eight players in the game at the all time, all went straight for the power up. Wait, did, you, did he just one v one someone with protection? Did Faze just do that? Did he just one v one someone with protection? Uh, not necessarily. It was two versus one, but she was incredibly weak. But almost didn't actually. Almost got the super shotgun blast to seal the deal there. Faze is so ridiculously weak and accidentally commits suicide. I actually think he did that on purpose. Like as soon as he saw he had full health, he immediately actually he almost looked like he aimed at the wall there to commit suicide. It was either a rocket jump that went skew it, or it was an intentional suicide to pass on the protection. But either way, they've been able to drop it off at the last possible second. And that point blank rail from Razy. I mean. Just violent right there. And that's 100 to 0. Very convincing round one. That was actually quite one sided. Unfortunately, Maestro Gaming just they captured it once, and that really was it. Humans of Magic were unable to capture the obelisk whatsoever. But that can happen sometimes. Just to reiterate, it does take two and a half minutes to go from 0 to 100 completely. So the fact that that round was three and a half minutes means that it really wasn't that addi much additional time on top of that through it being contested or being in transit. It was almost on the obelisk the entire time. Well, the crazy thing is, you would often expect that sacrifice is because it's a team mode and it's you know, holding a point for X amount of time, you would think it might be slower than Duel. But some of these maps, they will actually go faster than certain Duel maps. You know, if you have those three rounds and you go into a fifth round and everything's close because people are playing that distance-based game and really sort of playing with the clock. If you have two dominant rounds on Sacrifice, that's like a six-minute map, and that's it. Wow, well, Razy able to get a bunch of frags there. Going to drop it off again to Obelisk A. This is bad news for Dreams of Magic. They severely struggled to get anything out of this Obelisk last time, and already Maestro 5% and are holding on to it immediately. This is bad news for Dreams of Magic. You've got to be efficient at taking that soul to start with, and it's going to have to be a certain point in the map that every team will have to practice. But Derrison does manage to go on towards the quad, but because it's a quad, you're only going to survive for so long. But Dreamers Magic, they've still got the quad damage. They need to make it count. Doesn't quite get the second gauntlet, so Razy gets taken out with that point blank super shotgun. It's a ton of damage coming out from this quad, but this entire time, Maestro is still holding on to the soul. Oh, no. no, no, he walks into the plasma trail and hell detonates it. Unfortunately, completely killing himself in the process. That was so unfortunate. They weren't really able to do a whole lot, even though they had that killing spree, that impressive killing spree with quad damage. They got no percentage whatsoever because Maestro still put up the that defense. Is heartbreaking situation from Dreams of Magic. They had the quad, they had a bunch of frags, but were just, not only were they unable to get a percentage on the board, they didn't even contest it from Maestro Gaming. So they just continued to build percentage the entire time. It's almost 50% in the space of essentially one and a half minutes. Looking like it's going to be that again. This is so hard for Dreams of Magic to make a comeback. And it, it, it's essentially 150% to zero. They haven't got a single ounce of it in this entire map. I mean, if we see... Two, oh. oh, my Lord, that's so much damage. Oh, oh another one, Garpy! Shotguns and snipers coming back through now. But, I mean, just look at that. So much damage. Derrison, though. There's a couple of frags on the board. I need to test the soul. And for the first time, they've taken the soul off the obelisk. But will they get away alive? You can see how quick Maestro is sort of putting on that oh, pincer in hell, meeting him with the gauntlet, ready and waiting. And even before getting fragged, he covered a nice amount of distance. Derriston tries to transfer it back. They still haven't dropped off the soul, and Sombra kind of slips off the ledge. Oh, but Razy has it. Razy always there, waiting in the wind. And after a mega as well, he's got so much health. Here's one person waiting for him. Sawlag waiting for Sawlag, can he at least drop it off? Oh, and Nick's running around with the gauntlet, gets two kills for that nice play, but looks like FaZe is going to be able to take him down with the gauntlet of his own. Oh, but and Maestro after all that work, to recapture it, after all that work, they still weren't able to, but here comes the power up. But for one more time, if, if Maestro get this power up, which they have done, hell has the protection. 
this is going to be very difficult to push against him. It's going to be of health and armor that even the, the, the Slash has, let alone the rest of the team that are now sitting on this obelisk. They've got 15% left to go with plenty of protection left to use. Oh, dear. Oh, are we so actually going to see a 200 to zero game? Is that the route we're going at so far? All that area denial, that plasma trap, make it so hard to go oh. in. And Maestro, 95%, and just Dreams of Magic, one by one, are dropping left, right, and center. And that might actually be 200% to zero. I didn't think it was going to be this one-sided, but they are still here. They have to manage to contest it at least. Oh, dropped it off the map as well. I like that decision. Yep, he's gone into the reset. Between oh, how much make they sure struggled they... to get that yep. way last time. They've got to make sure they make this one count. Phase with the point blank. Oh, dear. He's surrounded, he activates the injection. The speed boost is going to help him travel a little bit. Denying the mega health from the rest of the competition too. Very important. I'm not quite sure about this though. Faye's getting it dangerously close to Dreams of Magic Obelisk. I think it's because he knows Dreams of Magic are going to pile in on the Obelisk. So, you know, they're unlikely to actually be around that location. Yes, yeah. teammates here. Oh dear. Yeah. Plasma Trail didn't quite paint around the whole thing. And he dropped it off. And there we go. Just ever so slightly. Milliseconds too late to the point. And that is going to be 200% to zero across those two rounds. Very one-sided for Maestro Gaming, looking absolutely on fire. It was actually well calculated at the very last minute there um, with FaZe, where he acknowledged, well, they're unlikely to be near their own obelisk because they're expecting me to drop it off. He used that time to not only pop his injection, but to then run over and pick up the mega health, even though he didn't really have much armor. As he went on to that point, he had pretty much so much health he could essentially just jump straight into that plasma trail and it didn't matter. He wasn't going to get taken out for free and he was able to drop it off. And because 1% was all the team needed, I think it was a good decision. I think it was a well-calculated decision that won their team the entire map. Oh, it was a good play and it was a flawless win in the very end. Literally not a single percentage on the board from Dreams of Magic. But it wasn't like they never contested. They managed to get the soul away a few times. They just couldn't safely get it from point A to point B, which is ultimately the point. But I think a big part of that just came down to... Um, Maestro looked a lot more confident in the 1v1s. Just those straight-up engagements where it's just, you know, the only thing you've got to do here is just win the fight. You've just got to win this shot. You've just got to win this fight between the two. And Maestro will consistently uh, get the best there. And it looks like, I think, Razy looking as strong as ever. We know Razy oh, has yeah. had a very, um, you know, I don't want to say zero to hero story because he's always been very powerful. But these la this last sort of like month or so, he has just exploded in terms of like how good he has been across doors. And even in Sacrifice still looking to be completely on, fly uh, on fire, I should say, especially when he's controlling that soul lag, which has kind of been his signature champion for so long now. And I think considering she's so good in both game modes as well, I think it, it, it's not a bad champion to really have a good job with on these two game modes that are both being pushed in the competitive order Quake so far. But we're going into our next map. It's going to be Lockbox as our next map. And this is quite an interesting one. I feel like it, it, it's a different version of playing Sacrifice on Lockbox because the, so it's very close quarters. It is non-stop action. There is no downtime. The power-up is in such a crazy focus point. And just to remind everyone, um, Garpy going in as that sort of flexible champion. On this map, he's gone in with Glena. He did the exact same thing against Wait For Us. Uh, didn't quite work out, even though it was a very, very close map. Didn't go in Maestro's favor, but he's sticking with the pick, and I think he's confident in it. On this map in particular, you know, teleporters being as useful as they are, being able to heal a teammate and multiple people is, is always going to be invaluable on a map like this when you're trying to defend, do damage to them when they try and take the obelisk. But I mean, let's face it, jump pads and teleporters are a number one way to navigate. And if she can deny those on this map, every teleporter becomes a massive risk. If you're running the soul and you use teleporter and die, you've just lost the entire soul and now the other team has it. Well, also, something I can imagine would be quite useful here is, you know, on topic of damage of the totems and sort of their utility, the damage they do is significant. And if you've got a, a squishy champion, like we know that uh, on the side of Dreams of Magic, there's both an Anarchy and a Nyx. If they have no armor, they'll and a slash. Be, yeah, if, if they have no armor, they'll get one shot by the by the totem, and slash won't get one shot, but she'll get yeah. significantly weakened by it. So if you've got totems at the end of teleporters, if you're like you know defending, if you're trying to attack, or you put them around an escape route that an anarchy is likely to take, that totem is going to maybe one shot him because you don't always have armor in sacrifice because just how frequently you're fighting and how quickly you might be able to get weakened down. The totems will be very dangerous. Well, we're 10 seconds away from this warm-up, which means we're going to be going into the game right now. Currently, Maestro are looking pretty unstoppable in this series. They took the last map 200% to 0%. Will they continue the rampage? Or is Dreams and Magic going to make magic happen and pull off the miraculous comeback to stay in this tournament? Now, one frag's already gone down. If you get fragged at the very beginning of the map, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're able to respawn by the time the soul has appeared, you're still going to be able to fight for it and help the rest of your team. The 20, 20 seconds, I should say, is up. Looks like Derriston's able to get it through. Hasn't got a lot of health at all, but trying to get it back towards A. This is going to be a safe capture. Oh, yes, it is. That rocket failing to connect is going to secure that one. 
but for the first time, they're actually not only get the soul first, but they are starting to climb their own percentage. So they've automatically had a better start, but they've got a lot of work to do to keep that momentum going, that's for sure. Still, though, 10% is 10% more than they were able to get last time, so you know, at the very, at the very least, they're happy they can at least Ooh. start this thing off the right way this time. I'll never get used to those shotgun ragdolls. They are insane. Oh, it looks like uh, Maestro were just basically just foregoing the soul just to try and get that pickup. Now, that's big quad damage. But it's been 20% in a very short amount of time. I mean, if, if they're not able to get anything going with this quad damage, or even worse, if they go down and allow Dreams and Magic to take it, then they may allow this lead to continue. They are winning Ooh. these sort of fights here and there at the moment. They do still have a little bit of quad left. That's going to be a frag onto Sombra. One person here trying to deny, but is he going to get the frag in time? Trying oh, no, to get all the dreams of magic. All dreams of magic, I should say, are following in quite close behind. No, they have been stopped from going in. Maestro able to position themselves properly. Now, plenty of members of Maestro have a rail, and they're defending the point, which is super, super important. You know, you've got so much vision from the back of this obelisk towards the rest. You can keep people at arm's reach, doing so much damage. By the time they actually close in that gap, they're not really healthy enough to take the fight, and let alone take the obelisk. Still, though, you were saying before about if Maestro weren't able to take the soul away with that quad, they would have been in a bad situation. I mean, in just as quickly, Maestro almost tying this thing up. Raising here now, Age of Defend, and Hell and Garpy 2 getting all the frags. This is kind of what happened last time. Once Maestro were able to just set up a defense, Dreams of Magic just could not see Jin at any point. And the power-ups are up for another 40 seconds. So Dreams of Magic kind of going in one at a time right now. One, maybe two. They just aren't quite going in with the same level of teamwork we're seeing from Maestro. They have the soul. Can they get away with it? It's looking unlikely. Hell has it. He's going to try and pass it back to his friend. Yes, he does. And there it is. Recaptured again. And the Toto on the point, waiting to heal up an ally or stop Dreams of Magic from just piling in, trying to take it back as fast as they can. And just like that, Maestro Gaming up now with quite a significant lead. But here comes the power up. The next fight. Dreams of Magic, they're piling in. They're dedicating every well, physical fell down body. The oh, no. Oh, hang on a minute. There's the double to win that one. And Hell gets the protection again. Hell has been doing beautiful things with protection so far. Another frag. Maestro is still holding on to it too. Ooh. Oh, too. I mean, he's not going to lose this fight. He's just taken way too much health to get taken out. And just the one-man army. That's one thing Hell does superbly well in this game mode is his knowledge of when and where to go in to make sure he can secure a power-up for himself. Very Most of the time on the Maestro roster, if someone gets protection or someone gets power-up, it's probably going to be Hell, especially on this map. Still, though, one thing that seems very difficult to deal with protection is when you kill someone and they drop armor shards, even a little tiny bit of armor you get from armor shards. When it's someone with protection, that alone will keep them alive in a 1v1. When it's someone like Hell that has that mobility and is willing to take those fights, it's so dangerous. Now, though, this is much better for Dreams of Magic. They are here in force. The majority of them are here trying to take this back. So we're trying to poke away damage from a distance. We're seeing a few rails. So the 85% they need to take this away now. Oh, no! no! FaZe was able to just navigate that minefield of nails and get the rocket in return. And because of that, they weren't able to get the soul by any degree. They've got 10% left, and Maestro will take this third round in a row in this series. They're looking pretty unstoppable so far. They are looking good. There is some able to get the soul, but a lot of work left to do. 94% to 27. Dreams Magic are going to have to hold this on for a long time, but Razy doesn't even let him do it. Oh, and there we go. Razy juking in the acid. Saw like being immune to its damaging effects. Actually, uh... I think it's a good use there. It helps, it helps Solag a lot more. The acid, right? That's really yeah, yeah. It helps Solag a lot more on this map than the other map because it's not just another Solag's acid that she doesn't take damage from. It's going to be the acid on the map as well. Still, that one's getting Dreams of Magic. They have no choice. They try to go in, but Maestro getting that 100%. That was a clean turnaround at the very end. Maestro, they were down for the first couple of minutes, but one capture is all they needed. It looks like Dreams of Magic having a much harder time to, like, just get it attacking an obelisk than defending one they have the only percentage dreams of magic were able to seize in that map was when they dropped it off first but the second they dropped it off maestro pretty much gave up that initial push on the obelisk just to take power up but it was taking the power up that allowed them to seize the obelisk take it back pretty effortlessly and then they essentially held it for 100 to zero so if they get the soul first Dreams of Magic, I mean, it, they need to just make some sort of adjustment. You know, there, there needs to be a solution here, and they have to do it, because this could be their final round. I actually really like that fight from Crazy there, though. Uh, Realizing that he was getting shot with a machine gun, so it was unlikely to uh, have any other weapons. So yeah, he just picked up the lightning gun and then forced the yeah. fight immediately. Sombra, though, who's on the soul, but Nate's still here. Oh, but he is surrounded this time. Looks like Maestro doing a much better job of trying to stop it, but ultimately it's still going to be won by Dreams of Magic. But no, another one! Two of them in the way. FaZe goes down, though, slip. 
So like, you drop it off. Oh no! Like, he oh, put he in just stable so to. much work. He put in so much effort to try and take that. He got three kills and almost got one more, but just half a second away from getting that drop off and wasn't able to do it. Garpy with the defense. Still though, Dreams Magic, they did get a few percent on it at the very least. So he was able to they have quad two. They were able to get power up also. They were able to uh, take the obelisk they wanted at the very least, but Maestro I have looked uh -oh. on the uh, actually almost like maybe better on obelisk be at the moment. So it's gonna be Razy with quad damage uh -oh. and the soul. I mean he's gonna be very difficult. That is quad one one. on its way out at the very least, so quad shouldn't be that much of a deciding factor for much longer. Might get one or two frags with it, but more, yeah, Derrickson's gonna fall, but he seems to be quite weak anyway. I actually well, quite like that, really. Uh, running outside of the base just to try and make sure he get at least one frag with the remaining quad damage. I mean, it is gonna keep them, even if it's gonna be by a few seconds, it will keep well, them back. Look at what's happened, right? It's given Maestro a few seconds to position themselves. Now all four of them are here, ready, ready to defend. And their defense has been their strongest point so far. Dreams of Magic just have not been confident in assaulting their obelisk so far. I think just even like that, three backflips. Very impressive. Ten points for that one. Oh, a lot of damage coming through. Racy quite weak. But he knows he's done a lot of damage at this point. Oh, Derrison barely alive. Oh, and Nix with that nice rail from a mile away. They do good things there. Three of them fall. That should be at least a capture away, but can they get it safely back? Looks like Maestro's oh, what already under position. Oh. Racy trying to stop him, and the acid would have done it at the very least. Sombra trying to get away, taking a lot of damage here, ticking down. Unfortunately, able to make that navigation all the way back because. Hell, the old gym, if you're going to be sort of going in for those, like, that's the dangerous thing. You can, the lightning gun just keeps you stuck in your tracks. You know, if you're going to be if you're going to be a sore lag or you're going to be a champion that has sort of used jumping a big part of their maneuverability, as is, you know, the way in Quake, it will just keep you stuck there and just push you back, stop any amount of speed you've got, and then that's it. You're dead. You can't really do much about it. But there's not much you can do to stop that in this situation. You have to just sort of just dedicate to it and hope that either you win the 1v1 or that they miss. Also, do you see how much damage that totem just did there? Yep. I RP did. putting that that one totem there. Ugh. One nails we need to follow up. That was really good. Sombra though, looking to capture this off. So Dreams of Magic able to build up a little bit, but again, yeah, they were able to capture and it's Maestro. hell with the protection one more time. But that's that's sort of what I was sort of uh, really getting at there is Dreams of Magic able to take the soul away when Maestro abandoned the soul in favor of getting the power up, and it's worked well for them again. As again, hell has it and the protection. He's gonna take so many rails before he goes down. Still those seven health, even for some protection will die here. Oh! And he does just in time, but Nix drops immediately. And Maestro ready to pick up the protection and the soul. And now it's Garpy that has the majority of the protection left, actually. And a totem remaining. So if he gets this frag, he's able to save the totem to not only heal himself and his team, but just if they try and take the soul, they're gonna have to run right on top of it and take that 75 damage. And, and there it is. Him. Oof! And Nix behind again, trying to run in. Gonna trade out that frag for frag, but again, trading a frag when one team is holding the obelisk and you aren't, that is 100% going to be in Maestro's favor. Crazy trying to get a nice rail from the distance. He knows he's surrounded here. You can see the dreams of magic are here in numbers. He needs his team to follow up soon. Looks like Kel is getting here too. Now contesting it. It's taken him quite a while to do it though. A couple of kills come through. I don't think they're going to be able to get away, and no, they are not. Maestro with another drop off. Well, they were able to quite quickly come back. That really is what that ball down to. Maestro, we just, they're working as a team so fast. Like, if, if they need to be somewhere as a unit, they're there immediately. It's good communication, good team comms. Such a valuable Ooh. asset to have. Big wish those slips gonna get a nice frag there with the acid. Wish you know we're really there to run. Or phase, but still gonna do well. Uh, Maestro Gaming, I should say, almost 90% and climbing. Every single percent, every second counts now. Four and a half minutes in, Maestro, a just colossal lead. 8%, 7%. Every second that goes down, there's gonna be more and more difficult for Dreamers of Magic to make the comeback. Maestro, 97, this might be all she wrote. This might be all they need. 1% left to go. They are contesting, but just outnumbered, completely outnumbered. Derrison's gonna fall, goes in with the gauntlet. And phase. There's a suicide, but Razy with the super shotgun, that one frag might have just sealed the deal. Can they get there in time? Are they there? I mean, the they've got 1% left, and FaZe just took the quad damage, even though he didn't need it. That would have been a guaranteed win either way. I mean, they're going to move on very comfortably in this lower bracket. That was not a qualification match, but it has put them further in this bracket, which now has left them in a situation where, all right, they've got one more chance. Uh, they need that run back. You know, Maestro, they want that run back against Wait for us, but they still have another team to get through. But that was still a well-fought match. I think they can be very happy with that result. No, I, 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 for, for sure they should be. Um, it looks like their next opponents are going to be the Winra licensed salesman going in. I mean, I'm sure there's a great story behind that one. But uh, Maestro, looking really good. You know, that first map was 200% to zero. This one, not quite as dominant, but still, 
very, very clean as a team. And this is just, you know, Maestro, they've been playing Sacrifice a lot. Um, they've had two players here that they haven't played with for as long as their sort of main roster, but still looking very good together. I actually think um, the star player I'm seeing so far on the side of Maestro, I, I, I would personally say is Hell. Hell really has been consistently making the right decisions, being in the right place at the right time. And we know he's been a, a core part of Maestro as a team since their conception. Since really. the beginning, you know, since, since they started playing, you know, within Quake Champions, he's been right in there and he's been doing very well for himself, mo mostly in sacrifice, of course. But this is not the end of them. They have to face off against the WinRa licensed salesman who is going to be up next. And while that match gets underway, we are once again going to go for a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.